<laughs> uh, plants have always kind of been there throughout my entire life. I've always been interested in them and in nature broad, in a very broad sense. Well, I actually had my first year seminar with Dr. Martin, and so he kind of introduced me to the world of studying biodiversity and things like that, and so he kind of brought botany into the light for me in that sense because I hadn't really considered it before. His lab was amazing. Everyone seemed to love each other and have so much fun. They worked on such cool things, um, and he had a spot for me. And so I, I, he gave it to me, and I, it was one of the best decisions I could have made. After freshman year, I just emailed Doc when I got back to Bucknell's campus just to tell him what I did that summer. I knew he was a plant biologist, so I was like, hey, I just spent time outside summer collecting plants with this professor at Howard. It was really cool. Um, and he emailed me back and was like, well, we have a spot open in our lab, so it sounds like you, know, you have some interest in this kind of stuff. Why don't you come check it out? He was the first professor I contacted involving undergraduate research and he had a slot in his lab open, so that's how that worked out. Currently I'm working on two different projects. One of them I started my sophomore year, which involves the population genetics of Ilex opaca, American holly, and the genetic interactions between cultivated populations and the wild type populations in Pennsylvania. The other project that I'm working on is on the Caprasma, Foliosa complex, which is a species that occurs in Hawaii, and we're trying to determine its evolutionary history and describe several new species out of this complex. I'm currently working on a new species. We went on a field expedition in May in the Northern Territory of Australia, and in that field expedition we were able to collect um, a voucher and leaf samples and fruit material of um, a new species of Australian bush tomatoes. And so this new species occurs in Lemon National Park, which is one of the newest national parks in the Northern Territory. So what I'm currently working on is taking different measurements of this species to do a morphometric analysis to then discern it as its own new species, which we've actually currently, um, well, which we've concluded is a new species. I work on Kinopodium Oahuense which is a, uh, a woody shrub from across the Hawaiian Islands. And researchers on the island of Molokai have recently found a potential new taxon or a potential new species of it. It grows like prostrate along the ground rather than um, like upright and bushy as a shrub. And it also grows on the sea cliffs of Molokai, which means it's exposed to a larger amount of salt spray and exposure to just like salinity in general than populations on other islands. So, my experiment is to determine whether this new Kinopodium uh, on Molokai is a different taxon or a different species from the established Kinopodium Oahuense on all the other Hawaiian islands. My first formal project was taking uh, morphological measurements between these two species, Selenum Ibernium and what we later named Selenum Watnii. Um, and then taking those measurements and running them through statistical analyses programs to see like, you know, they might look different to us, but do the measurements actually say something like, yes, these are definitely different. And then I've also, I did that with another um, new species for Selenum ossicruentum, which also got published uh, last semester as a new species of Australian Selenum. And that one was really cool because we partnered with a local middle school to pick the name for it and got all the input from the seventh graders around here about what they wanted to name a new species. The project we're working on for botany is in the greenhouse here we do an integrated pest management program whereas most greenhouses will spray for pests like aphids, thrips, or spider mites using chemical sprays. We decided to go a different route and we use um, natural predators and parasites, other insects to counter those, which is really fascinating to see and we're one of the only small academic researches in the country doing that.
One of the beautiful things about uh, how our summers are set up is that we have uh, the, our conference, the Botany Conference, that comes at the end of every summer. So we have a chance for students to come in and, and do their 10-week fellowships in the lab. And it, it really is kind of this great bonding experience and this great sort of uh, discovery experience that we have together. And then at the end of it all, we all truck off to some town or city in another part of the country and present the science that we've done that summer. So it's a pretty ideal situation. On Thursdays, we talked about um, actual research related to all of our uh, different fields, but was sort of combined um, uh, topics that were of interest to everyone. And it was really a great opportunity to share with all the students these different um, ideas and talk about what each student was learning and um, basically do the science together. The students worked many hours during the week to complete projects that led us eventually to Savannah, Georgia, where we attended the Botanical Society of America conference. The uh, annual International Botany Conference is a really ideal place for us to bring our work. It uh, is hundreds, sometimes thousands, of plant scientists from all over the world. And it's this opportunity for the students and myself and Jay to go and share the stuff that we're doing in uh, a rigorous environment, but also in a really um, friendly environment, a very supportive environment. Botany folk are just happy and nice and really caring and they're a supportive community. So it's great to be a part of that and to bring other people into that community. It's just an honor. There's little that I love more than being at that national botany meeting and having colleagues from across the country and sometimes across the world approach me after the poster session and say they went up to one of our students and saw their presentation and saw their poster and that they're super impressed and uh, surprised by the level at which these students are working. And it happens every summer, every time we go to the meeting. Our students show up, they do a great job, and people walk away saying, of the Bucknell botanists are doing it the right way. I think in, in, a, in a lot of labs, particularly at schools that aren't super focused on undergraduate education, um, it's pretty commonplace to hand a student a pipette and say, do this for the next 200 hours and then let me know when you're done. And, and that, we try to avoid that as much as possible. We really try to have students be engaged and involved from the very moment that we're thinking about ideas. Right? I never, almost never, develop an idea for research that doesn't include some way that students can be involved in it and often at the early stages. Here's an idea, what kind of questions can we ask, what kind of experiments can we design to get the answers to those questions and then on the back end what you know what's the best way to present this and write this and maybe get it published as a paper and that's the kind of experience that I really want my students to have in my lab. I like to think of our lab as uh, less of a place that people come to work and more of a small community and maybe even, you know, it sounds cliche, but maybe even sort of a, a small family. You know, we operate um, as a group together and we spend a lot of time in that lab together. Uh, and I think that's one of the things that sort of helps us do really good science, right? We, we like each other, we um, support each other, uh, and, um, you know, I don't know if I'd have it any other way, you know. <laughs>